No. Pathologic is a Russian first-person uh, game released in 2005 by Ice Pick Lodge. In its homeland, Pathologic is widely regarded as a success, and though it has certainly garnered a cult following elsewhere, it's still relatively unknown and impenetrably cryptic to most. Make no mistake, this game, and I'd say this without a trace of humor or lightheartedness, this game is fucking weird. I bought the original several years ago and had it open for maybe 10 minutes, and I was so off-put by the strange and awkward translation and lack of clear instruction, I closed it and never thought about it again. 10 years later in 2015, it was re-released with newly polished gra with newly polished graphics, a new translation and restored content that was originally cut from the international versions. This re-release is also I'm assuming meant to build hype for the remake that is slated to be completed by the end of 2016. So hopefully the third time's the charm and they make the game they've been trying to get right for over a decade. Alright, so... Fuck, where, where do I start? Okay, so you know how in a game, let's say Morrowind or Deus Ex, would share a lot of similarities with Pathologic. Both Morrowind and Deus Ex have these very lived-in worlds that are filled with characters, ideas, history, technology, and customs that are a little strange at first because we live in this regular boring world. In any case, the details of these worlds are usually explained to you through context clues or exhaustive dialogue. Well, Pathologic has a world like this, but you're more often left in the dark as to the meaning or purpose behind most things you'll see and hear. Well, the game takes place in a town, and I'm just realizing they never mention the name of this town, but it's an isolated and strange place seemingly cut off from the rest of society. I couldn't even tell you what time period it's supposed to be inspired by, as most of the clothing and architecture is wildly anachronistic. You'll see people wearing jeans and leather jackets, but there are also buildings and costumes that would be more at home in the late 19th century. Nobody speaks a recognizable dialect that you can trace to a time period or country. Even with this updated translation, the language at play sounds fake. It sounds like an art student trying his best to sound patronizing. In a heavy-handed attempt at paralleling the game's narrative with a theatrical performance, every single character sounds like an actor, like you just walked in on them rehearsing and they won't break character. This would be really interesting if your character was confused by this and felt left out, but they will respond in the same fashion. The central theme of this game is a plague. There is a Black Death-like plague called the Sand Pest that slowly begins to spread throughout the town. This isn't known to the main characters at first, however. In Pathologic, you can choose from three different protagonists that are all working to achieve similar goals through different paths. The Bachelor, the Haruspex, and the Changeling. Most people find the Bachelor character the easiest because he's unfamiliar with the town and people are more likely to help you out and explain things to you. So. Playing as the different characters weaves you through different storylines, dialogue, and challenges, but for the most part, you are working to find the source of the disease, and save as many of the townsfolk as you can. For the Bachelor storyline, he is sent to the town by the mysterious powers that be, in order to verify that one of its residents is over 200 years old. However, this man dies shortly after the Bachelor arrives. At that point, he's kind of strong-armed by these aristocratic families all vying for control of the town, into investigating the cause of the man's death, it starts to become obvious that what they are dealing with is a possible outbreak, and also that you've had a lot of information kept from you. Everyone is so secretive and cryptic, and you constantly feel out of the loop and like you're being taken advantage of. There are lots of twists and turns to the story, and your alliance to certain characters will change as more is revealed about them. But that's ultimately the most important part of the story, essentially. It's who you put your trust in. Sure, there are lots of side stuff going on, like a geometrically impossible chamber filled with doghead children, a giant slaughterhouse filled with mentally underdeveloped butchers, and rival factions of gangs murdering people in the streets. But the majority of the story is you being ordered back and forth between families and trying to approach an inevitable pandemic in the smartest fashion. The cruel part of Pathologic is that you're never quite sure what that is. There isn't so much a good ending or a bad ending as there are just endings. It's constantly driven home that you're not going to end up being a hero. You're going to do the best you can and save as many as you can, but people are going to die and you're going to make mistakes and you're going to trust the wrong people and in the long run that's okay. The game's not going to end because you forgot to save someone or messed up. 
It's elements like these that set Pathologic apart from a lot of games. As strange as it is to say, this game is not fun, and it doesn't pretend to be. In the creator's own words, the project began as a cultural experiment, meant to explore the potential video games hold as works of art. Interviews with Icepick are full of a lot of big ideas and grandiose claims about the importance and relevancy of their work. In the face of AAA developers stealing genre conventions from the film industry and peddling oversimplified games to an audience that's slowly growing stupider and stupider with every $60 they drop on the next, uh, I don't know, what's a game that people don't like? Uh, Homefront? The Revolution? No, like a real game. Let's go with that one. I'm paraphrasing, of course. It's easy to see the flaws in the gaming industry and to opine for a gaming renaissance. But Pathologic, for all its value and originality, isn't bringing us there. It's going to be a brutally slow and unlikely crawl to anything new. I think it's going to have to crash substantially and fall apart. We have to lose everything before we can rebuild. <laughs> So I had taken notes on this, but I used my notebook and the, that page to kill a big scary centipede that came into my house, so I might miss some important stuff, but controlling Pathologic feels very familiar. To games like, oh I don't know, I'll just pick two off the top of my head, say Morrowind or Deus Ex, it's first person, you have an inventory at the bottom, you can fight enemies with melee or ranged weapons, and you can sneak around. You can break into houses and steal stuff if you're brought to it. The difference is everything else. Unlike a game with RPG elements, you're not grinding activities to increase your stats and become more powerful. Pathologic is very much about resource management and survival. You need to eat, you need to sleep, you need to keep your immune system up and keep your infections at bay. You will never not have at least one of these bars be in dire need of attention. This is where the majority of this game's difficulty will come from. There is never an easy out or a cure-all to get you in a good healthy standpoint. If your exhaustion level is up, you need to sleep, but that makes you hungry and makes your infection grow rapidly. So you think to take some antibiotics, but even though your infection is lowered, it damages your health. So you can drink morphine, but that only helps if you're going to sleep, which will return your infection and hunger. So you can take a bunch of immunity boosters and antibiotics and morphine, even though all these damage your health. So you'd probably not make a significant difference unless you also manage to find one of these drunk guys wandering around, and you've already raided all the trash cans to find five empty bottles and filled them with water. You can trade them for one bandage, which is a clear-cut healing item with no side effects, though it is not very effective. You could also consume coffee or lemons in order to stave off exhaustion, but these damage your health and barely affect your hunger. You know how you drink some coffee and then it immediately kills you? You know that happens, right? That's a thing that happens. The whole process of staying alive is intentionally stressful and intentionally tries to make you uncomfortable. Even the convenience of shop owners turns against you. When infection rates rise, so does the price of rations and medicine. So you need to get hundreds of dollars to buy a loaf of bread or some dried fish. Well, the most abundant source of currency is to essentially become a serial killer. It's okay not an undiscriminating, heartless killing machine, you gotta find the ones that deserve it. Like thieves or arsonists. Just roam the streets in the late hours and stalk shady looking dudes that all have identical character models. You get a clean kill, you get their money and probably their weapon. This is putting you at risk of taking some hits though which are gravely counterproductive because now you have to find a way to heal yourself using only the money you've collected and most pharmacists don't sell simple health items if you're in need of ammo or harder to come by drugs just like real life talk to all the children all children are part of an illegal arms and narcotic smuggling ring and they'll gladly hand over bullets or pills for something as simple as peanuts guns are very effective in pathologic and hard to come by as they have been mostly banned in the city not even the law enforcement carries weapons so if if you have a gun, you are a god for as many bullets you have, which is probably not a lot. And if you've been using your gun a lot, its accuracy will rapidly diminish until you're essentially pulp fictioning every person you try to shoot. So these are all things you have to worry about while trying to accomplish what are on the surface very simple goals. You do have main objectives for each of the 12 days that make up Pathologic's story. There are also optional tasks you can accomplish, but only your main quests need to be finished before the day is over, in order to prevent any of your bound characters from becoming sick or dying. The bound characters need to be kept alive in order for you to achieve something resembling a positive ending. It's really inconvenient and possibly game ending if one of your bound are infected and you have no means to save them. They are saved by very rare items called panacea. If you don't have any, then you cannot complete any goals involving that character. Missing out on your goals for the day doesn't stop the game. 
time will still tick away and the new day will arrive, but your neglect could come back to hurt you later. Pathologic is packed full of frustrating mechanics, and they are mostly intentional, but it's also got a lot of issues that the developers openly own up to. Like its nominal approach to combat, stealth, really basic enemy AI, enemies essentially have two modes, wander back and forth, and run straight for you swinging. The worst part is the walking. It's so often the case that your quest will have you visiting various characters from all ends of the map, and there's no shortcut or sprint button. You are forced to casually stroll through a town that has no discernible landmarks or variation in architecture while time is ticking away, your body is falling apart, you don't know where you're going so you keep checking your map, rats are chasing you, and randomly appearing clouds of plague you could run into. Though you can't see them if you use this magic eyeglass thing, but you can't use it too much or it'll deplete for some reason. Or you could just round the corner and get a knife thrown at you. If you're not deterred by the brutal difficulty and learning curve, you might find a lot of enjoyment out of Pathologic as an experience. If you want to have fun playing a video game by the traditional definition of fun, i.e. complete leading challenges for awards, being immersed in a narrative, feeling like you overcame an obstacle, escapism, general boredom disruption. You will not get that. I don't even mean that as an insult because they covered their bases by outright telling you this isn't a fun game. It's a test of your patience and your tolerance for punishment. And with three storylines, all with 12 in-game days, you're gonna have well above 60 hours of paranoia, anxiety, and hopelessness. Fans of Pathologic are passionate and will most certainly tell you that the atmosphere and world building are good enough to eclipse any of its bigger faults. And there's a great deal of validity to that claim. But it's also completely understandable that most will be turned away by its clunky design, a clunky design that betrays its oppressive atmosphere. If we're fighting for our lives in a rapidly decaying town, shouldn't I have an appropriate emotional response? Shouldn't I care? Shouldn't combat be a desperate, outmatched struggle for my life instead of an annoyance? Shouldn't I feel bad about hurting people for personal gain? This this isn't about the game, do but do most people experience that? Though Pathologic looks outdated, and looked outdated even when it was released, it's hard to criticize such a unique looking game. Yes, there are a lot of repeated textures and character models, but the world of Pathologic is so fucking weird and esoteric that it's sort of charming. Once you finally accept that you probably won't get any satisfactory answers to why anything is anything, you start to appreciate the fact that someone wrote this and made a game out of it. This game is packed with visuals and ideas that are not only unsettling, but made even more so because you don't know what any of it is. You don't know why any of it is happening, and your characters aren't all that interested in understanding why. It's borderline avant-garde, and it's definitely Pathologic's strongest asset. From a graphic standpoint though, Pathologic doesn't have a lot going on. It looks sort of cheap, and I'm sure that's another thing fans could claim as premeditated, but I think despite cool ideas and character design, it's not a great game to look at. It's hard to find a cool excuse why you're being jumped by a group of the same guy with the same outfit and same crazed expression. This is a little too close to my reoccurring nightmares, at least they don't look like myself and have knives instead of mirrors. You got a lot of interesting music in this game. It's not necessarily what I would associate with the look of the game, but it certainly has its own vibe to it that is consistent consistent, like a mix of dark ambience and trip-hop with warped vocals and breakbeats. It's actually really good, but doesn't always mesh well with the visuals. If the world of Pathologic was made up of dark alleys and neon signs, I'd find it a little more fitting. But the setting is much too rural and lifeless to accommodate such a busy electronic soundtrack. There is very little voiceover in Pathologic. Most important characters will have a line or two when you initiate a conversation with them, but it's never anything important and it's just as strangely phrased as the text. Why is the termitary so loud? What are they celebrating? The biggest show of voice acting is the opening sequence where we see the three players on stage trying to convince each other that their way of handling the situation is best, which is actually a really clever way of getting to know the personalities before you choose the one you want to play as. Step aside, both of you. Your gentle hands are used to killing, not giving life. You will inevitably do harm. As for Brainy, he has no regard for casualties at all. It's it's not good though, it's quite bad, because the dialogue is so awkwardly translated and it becomes even more apparent when you read any of it out loud and try to sound like a human being at the same time. <laughs> I, in all my magnificence and power, 
It's another thing that defenders will claim adds to the charm of Pathologic, but it is still very much a mistake. I'm still not capable of latching on to any of these characters or really understanding them because their words don't often carry any recognizable emotion or tone. It's kind of like someone I knew who was like this beautiful and amazing empty shell that refused to fucking let me in so I had to find another way in. Pathologic isn't fun, and that's a real tough reality for me to move past. In order to enjoy the game's finer qualities, it's billed as an experiment to dredge some rather unpleasant emotions out of you. If you're anything like me, I spend a good 95% of my time feeling stressed out and anxious, so I don't really need that 5% being threatened by a video game. I didn't like playing this game but I enjoyed the process that led me to that. The genuine challenge involved in simply understanding the world of Pathologic and having to figure out all the ways to scrape by in a relentlessly hopeless world. That was very interesting. It's not something you're likely to find replicated anywhere else. This game garnered a cult status outside of its home country, but that may have been due to things that were out of the developer's hands. In truth, Pathologic was probably much more coherent and political in the language it was intended to feature. And the things we think add charm and character are probably honest mistakes that they seem to want to fix by remaking the entire game. Because they've owned up to their feelings about Pathologic, it's hard to see this game as the real game. It's like an unstable alpha for this new version. Having a realistic challenge with resource management could have been enjoyable, but there's too much room for really unfortunate programming. I can't tell you how many times I received an item from an NPC only to have it fall onto the ground in front of me because my inventory was full, and since it doesn't tell you that in any way, I don't think to look at my feet and I just wander off only to discover much later that I don't have whatever important quest item I needed. So not only is it a game that's intention was to frustrate and stress you out, but several oversights in programming and several bugs will only contribute to those feelings, more so than what was necessary. Though Pathologic builds a very original world and palpably bizarre atmosphere, it's a rough and unfinished concept that would require a much more legitimate attempt at being adapted for other languages, and a clearer sense of direction. There are absolutely moments that shine through Pathologic's flaws, but the long stretches of walking between people on different sides of town relaying messages failed to keep my attention. A more competent team could take this concept, this visual style, and this soundtrack and make something really interesting. So I'm hoping that that's what the remake will be. But I have a strong feeling it's going to be more of the same, which is great for all the fans of Pathologic. But they should be more forthcoming with the fact that they are selling an experiment and not an adventure. It looks like an adventure, controls like one, but it is far from one. Just like the way I look like a person, talk like a person, but somehow manage to be completely invisible. <laughs> In my restless dreams, I see that town, Silent Hill. You promised you'd take me there again someday, but you never did. Well, I'm alone there now, in our special place, waiting for you, waiting for you to come to see me, but you never do. You <laughs> Fuck. Sorry, I got weirdly emotional reading that. With these upgrades, you never stood a chance.